Okay, so if you've been on the internet at all this last week, I know what you're thinking. What the... Vengeance. The trailer for the new Batman movie starring Robert Pattinson just dropped at DC Fandom, and the internet has been going crazy ever since. This trailer over-delivered on another level, I'm telling you. I can't wait for this movie. And you know what? The same thing happened when Heath Ledger was announced to be cast as the Joker. Everyone said he would be a bad fit for the role and could never imagine him playing this character. And then the movie came out and he has been looked to as the best Joker ever since. He just delivered an absolutely incredible performance. Same thing with Pattinson. Everyone was worried about him being too skinny to play Batman or him not being the right fit for the character, but after seeing this trailer, him and his Batman booties look like they're going to kill it as the Batman. Welcome back to the channel, I'm Michael J, and I am so excited to see Matt Reeves' dark take on Gotham and the Batman in his second year of his vigilante journey. They make Batman look like such a cool superhero. I think everyone right now would love to be the Bat. Here, let's try an exercise. Let's practice smashing some stuff. Let's see, okay. Yeah, Batman definitely hits him a few times like he means it, so let's go ahead and practice on the like button, shall we? Wind up and just let the like button have it. Just give it your all like it's one of Gotham's thugs. And now you, my friend, after smashing that like button, are one step closer to becoming Batman. We've got a lot of exciting things to talk about in this video, including some Easter eggs, that last scene at the end, a few hidden details you may have missed, and of course that clue that was left for Batman. So you know what, let's just jump right into it. Now I really like that in this trailer there were no jump cuts. This is a really dangerous black hole in Hollywood that bigger movies can easily fall into if they're not careful. Just every time that someone is about to get punched or there's an action scene that they want to be more intense, a lazy fallback is just adding a bunch of jump cuts. But you know what? Quick cuts aren't cool, especially when it takes Liam Neeson 13 cuts to hop over one fence. It just isn't. And sometimes when there's too many cuts, it just hides the action and makes it feel staged or even hard to follow. So when the Batman trailer came out and we saw them give us a front row seat to the action with no jump cuts, Holy cow, we are going to be in for a treat. I mean, that's why all these punches feel so good. And especially considering that they've only filmed around 25% of the movie. Yeah, that's right. This entire trailer was assembled from just a quarter of the actual film, which blew me away because it didn't feel incomplete at all. Like, if anything, this 25% of the movie feels big enough to be its own thing which just gives us even more reason to be hyped around this film. It didn't show off too much, nothing crazy got revealed spoiler wise, but they still showed enough to make me really want to see more. And the eye makeup was one of the best things to come from this trailer. They're always showing Batman with makeup on under his cowl, but as soon as he takes it off, it just magically disappears. His makeup isn't magic, we want true realism. Yes, I've never been more hyped to see someone in face paint before. Everyone was worried that Pattinson wasn't the right pick for this role and he's just over here like, hold my makeup. VENGEANCE! This Bruce Wayne looks like he needs some serious sleep. He kind of looks like a zombie and not gonna lie, I'm digging it. It's something more dark and gritty than we've ever seen before. It's kind of giving him some crazy vibes, you know? Like he's been staying up all night trying to catch a supervillain or something. I mean, if you think about it, this is probably how Bruce Wayne would actually look because he is running around Gotham all night long, fighting crime and searching for clues in places you can't go in broad daylight. Then during the day, he's attending meetings as a businessman and going to events and ceremonies as Bruce Wayne and also helping the police as Batman, so he's just really working around the clock here. I like that they're going for the realistic approach with this movie. I think they nailed it here with the eye makeup and the sleep deprived Bruce. And you gotta remember, this is Batman only on year two. This isn't an origin story, this is him already being the Bat. I mean, he's still early enough into the vigilante game that his costume is still a little homemade as well as his car and the Batcave too, but I'm sure all the upgrades will come with time, but right now it looks like he's just going to try to stay awake long enough to catch Gotham's current killer. The successful dark tones that the Joker movie had really showed them what people wanted and what people were willing to watch because this movie looks dark. It looks grimy, gritty, and it looks like it's going to be such a freaking good movie. And they actually made the Riddler scary. Wow, that's what I like to see. Paul Dono is going to do a great job as the Riddler. At first, I didn't even recognize him because he wasn't in a bright green suit with question marks all over it. He's got his face wrapped up, you can't see anything. It's a much more grounded interpretation of this character, and I like it. And Colin Farrell is completely unrecognizable as the Penguin in this trailer. I just can't wrap my head around the fact that this is actually him. And also, recently, I haven't been able to wrap my head around the fact that, slowly but surely, the channel's coming up on 200k! The big 200! The other month we we gain like 30,000 subs over the course of just two weeks, which is crazy. But after YouTube is nice, the views usually tank for a bit before they pick back up. Yeah, see, we've only gained 2,000 subs in all of August. Like, really? Come on, YouTube. I mean, subscribe if you want, but 
Maybe let's try smashing the like button. Let's see if that tells the YouTube algorithm to promote the video a little bit more because we need to hit 200k. And big news, we also hit 1,000 members in the best Discord on the planet. I'm super proud of this community. We just had another gaming event where we had a Brawlhalla tournament with a bunch of subs in the Discord. Shout out to Maxim for winning. He absolutely destroyed. I need someone to train me so I can beat him next time. But if you want a place to make some new friends to hang out with and talk about these movies and shows with, or even if you just want to hang out and play some games or listen to some music with some friends, you should totally come check out the Discord. We'll be doing our first giveaway soon, and all the channel updates like merch and stuff coming up soon will be heard here first. If you go down to the pinned comment, there's a link that will take you straight to the Discord. Come say hi, we'd all love to meet you. We've got some more events coming soon that you're not going to want to miss. Alright, now back to the video. Like I was saying, I know Colin Farrell gained some weight for this role, but he's got to be under so much prosthetics and makeup, I'm curious why he looks so different than how he looked in the leaked set photos from earlier this year. Maybe he's going to be going through some big transformation before he actually turns into the Penguin, because all the villains in this movie are only just now starting out without their known aliases. Selina Kyle isn't Catwoman yet, Oswald Cobblepot isn't the Penguin, and Edward Nashton isn't the Riddler. Even Batman is still rough around the edges in this movie, like, really rough. As you can see from that last fight scene, it looks like he's still building himself up to be the symbol of hope that he'll one day be for Gotham. So the general public and the police still see him as this crazed vigilante. Matt Reeves said that he's working on making himself to be more heroic over time rather than just a blunt instrument on crime. He's still very much young and angry, and I think the trailer did a really good job of establishing the tone for this movie. They were like, oh yeah, so uh, how dark do you want to go with this movie? And the director was just like, yes. I don't know, something just feels good about this movie. It really does feel different and unlike any other Batman we've ever seen before. And I think that's really going to work in this movie's favor. And I love that Batman is just openly allowed here at the murder scene. It doesn't seem like the cops are in a hunt the bat mode yet. It just goes to show that Gotham is so messed up that they will blatantly allow a masked vigilante to examine their crime scenes. I'm really looking forward to seeing Batman's relationship with the cops in this movie. I feel like it'll play a much bigger role in this movie than it normally does. They announced that the series, Gotham P will interact and tie into this new Batverse, but it takes place during Batman Year One, whereas the movie takes place during Year Two. So maybe eventually we'll get to see the series continue on throughout the movies, and we'll get a police perspective, kind of behind the scenes look, at all the events that happen in the movies. I would love to see that. And real quick, just gotta say, DC is at their best when they're not trying to do what Marvel's doing. And I think they have something very special here with this Batman. I'm excited to see how they continue to expand this Batverse with the shows and spin-off villain movies. I know Batman will evolve over time, but I might be a little sad if he ever leaves the beat you up until your friends cry stage. That last scene was just so cool. My jaw dropped after the second punch. He didn't even have to keep going after the guy fell down. He just wanted to scare his friends so he didn't have to go through all them and put them in the hospital too. I don't know if Batman's supposed to kill in these movies, but that guy is looking a little dead. See, that's why I'd rather fight someone like Superman. Yeah, he's a god, but he's just gonna pick you up and fly you to jail. Batman, on the other hand, he's gonna leave you with a broken rib cage, some missing teeth, maybe a broken arm and a leg, and then some permanent brain damage on top of that. You're not recovering from this. Yeah, I'd gladly take a free flight to jail from Soups any day of the week over this. But nonetheless, when he stopped punching him finally and we were all on the edge of our seats and then he got to that point, that perfect point where you think he's finally gonna say, I'm Batman. And then instead, I'm Vengeance. Wow. Okay, you guys got us. I'm hook, line, and sinker. I can only hope that he finishes the sentence in the movie. For any of you that don't know, this is the OG line by Kevin Conroy from the animated series. Batman was suffering from one of Scarecrow's intense hallucinations, and by saying this, he literally brought himself back and saved himself. I am vengeance. I am the knight. I am Batman. That is the full quote. I'm really hoping that they finish it and he says the whole thing in the movie. That would be so epic. Batman just beat that guy unconscious and then was like, I'm vengeance. No, uh, I don't think he heard you. I'm vengeance. Okay. The quote also appeared in the Arkham Knight game when Batman beat Scarecrow's hallucination as a Joker, but this is the first time we're going to get it in a live action movie. Finally! This is one of those movies that I want to see on opening night with a big crowd where everyone's freaking out and jumping out of their seats. I think that might be one of my favorite ways to watch movies. Now, we're going to be seeing a lot of villains in this movie, and apparently the Riddler's crimes revolving around the corruption in the city might lead back to the history of Gotham, which might just introduce us to the Court of Owls. This is like a group of elites 
streets, kind of like Illuminati that run Gotham from the shadows. I don't think they're going to be a big part of the plot for the first movie. There just is so much already. I think we're going to learn about them and see some things that could lead to Batman going after them in the second movie, though. I mean, the owl on the card from the Riddler's Clue is the most obvious head nod. Batman has a wrist gauntlet that looks very similar to Talon's, and in one of the shots, you can see someone wearing a mask that looks exactly like the ones the Court of Owls wears. I can't wait to see what kind of role they'll play in this first movie. I'm expecting some big reveal at the end that turns Batman's focus to them for the second movie. Maybe that his parents used to be in the group or something, or they're linked to his parents' death. Who knows? Who, who knows? Get it? Because they're owls? 2021 is just, it's going to be a solid year to be a DC fan. We've got the Justice League Snyder Cut, we've got Black Adam and the Gotham Knights video game, and then this movie to top it off. Yeah, it's already looking to be a better year. I'm not sure how it could be any worse than this year. It's funny that back in 2008, every teenage girl was freaking out over how dreamy of a vampire Pattinson was in Twilight, and then jumped to 2020 and all the guys are freaking out over how great of a bat he's going to be again. It's like a dream come true to get a Batman this realistic. This might be the darkest night ever. Thank you, thank you. You guys like that? I'll be here all week. Well, actually, I'm gonna go chill in the Discord, talk with some fans, chill, listen to some music, maybe play some games. Look down and smash that like button if you haven't already. I'm going to be working on merch for a bit. Get hyped. Hopefully, it'll be here in time for the holidays. I am so excited. I've been wanting to do this for so long. Thank you so much for watching the video. I'll be back soon with more superhero videos and hopefully a Stranger Things video soon. I know you guys want that. And until then, you can find me here in the comments as well as in the Discord server. Link is in the pinned comment. Thank you so much for your support. I hope you have a great rest of your day. And until next time, I will see you in the comments. Peace.